All right. What's going on, everybody? This is Peter Renna back with another edition of Dollar Bin Digging. Now, for the last month, I've been kind of laser focused in on uh, Disney Plus and the uh, MCU. And I think I need to kind of just take a break and step away for a minute and uh, give you guys a, a little uh, something different this week. Maybe even uh, next week as well. So I am taking a suggestion I did get from the comments. This was from uh, Nepser1, who said, uh, Peter, once Spider-Man 3, Shang-Chi, and Eternals comes out, would love to see a video on dollar comics for them, which I will absolutely do and do them well before those movies come out. But also underrated comic book cover for a dollar as well. So that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to go with some uh, pure cover picks of uh, stuff that I've been grabbing and I always grab whenever I find it. So... Please check out the article on uh, comicbookinvest.com. Also, I uh, do the video with a couple of honorable mentions snuck in in the after credits on my personal channel, as well as this video here also on uh, Tales from the Flip Side. So please like, subscribe to my channel, to Tales, bookmark the website, read the article, watch the videos, uh, let me know what you'd like to see, because as you can see, I take suggestions and I run with them. So. Your comments and suggestions definitely help out. As you can see, I'm um, taking Nepser One's lead on this. He suggested something. I'm rolling right with it the week after. So please make those comments because I do read them and I do pay attention. This week, I'm going to look at some covers that I've been grabbing from uh, some Jenny Frizens to uh, some uh, Lucio Perillo's to uh, my fan favorite, Jim Lee, as uh, well as a couple of little things. So please just uh, stick around and we'll get right into it in a second. All right, so for our first selection, as I mentioned, Jenny Frizen, I am a fan. I've uh, loved her work for quite some time. That run on Wonder Woman is excellent. And uh, I would suggest grabbing those uh, Rebirth B cover Wonder Womans if you don't already have them, because you do find a lot of that in the overstock boxes these days. Maybe not so much hers, but there were uh, some definite winners in there that you can grab. And if you can find them for cheap, definitely get them. But I'm going with a book and a title that may be a little bit harder to find in dollar bins these days because uh, they've been picked pretty clean, but I still run across them occasionally because sometimes, you know, dynamite books will find their way there. So I'm uh, taking my buddy Mike Morello's lead on this one and going with one of his favorites, and that's Red Sonia. She had uh, a solid run on this title uh, a while back, and you can occasionally sneak some of these, again, in those cheap bins because things come back around. They're stored and forgotten about for ages. They get bought in just bulk sales, and they just find their ways into dollar bins. Now, I know there's some uh, some you know big winners and there's some variants and whatnots, but uh, just some of the regular covers, you can still sneak on the cheap. So I really love this number 12, just something in those eyes, just staring through the hair with the sword. Uh, that was one that I am a big fan of, and I suggest you go look out, you know, keep an eye out for it, obviously. And uh, even if you can't find it at a dollar bin, you can probably still find this pretty cheap because it's it's not that expensive. There is a, a black and white version that's basically more of just a, a like a copic grayscale kind of marker with uh, the hair still red to obviously add that, you know, that, that kind of punch, you know, to the picture. So there's also a full red kind of a uh, sheen that you get like if you're looking through one of the old school uh 3d uh glasses but just through the red side you get that kind of effect just by the entire you know red cover and then there's also a super hard to find i think this might be limited to 50 copies uh version so i'm not saying you're gonna find any of that for a dollar even the regular one's a tough tough call to find for a dollar but just yeah just so you know just figured you might be interested in that kind of thing but again any issue in this run from uh number one all the way through that also had a, a black and white variant and I think she did a run through this whole series up through issue 18, which is a completely different cover, as you can see from the last two, with this beautiful frame with the swords, and there's a lot of a lot of blues and shadow there. It's really cool. And that also has a, a variant as well in this uh, black and white, uh, almost like a sketch, uh, if, if you can call it that kind of variant. But just any of uh, Jenny Frizen covers are worth grabbing. And for this, I decided to kind of look at her... Uh, Red Sonia covers, because I'm a big fan. And again, I found them. I found them for cheap before. They're not easy to find. I haven't found them in a while, so I'm not saying there's tons out there. But it's just something to remind you and something to keep your eye out for, because you never know what you might find in the boxes near you. And kind of sticking with this, uh, with Dynamite a little bit, 
I'm also going to pivot to uh, Vampirilla, which she also did some uh, gorgeous covers you know, on Vampirilla as well. But for this one, I'm going to go with uh, the Lucio Perillo, uh, Perillo. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. His Vampirilla covers. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. The, there are some, some big money, you know, big money covers mixed in here. Uh, so you're most likely not going to find them on the cheap because people do know to look out for them because they really grab your eye. Like this issue 19 has been expensive for some time. I still don't have one of these. I'm still on the lookout for one. I'll find it eventually, but you can find some of the other ones, uh, occasionally when you're out there digging, I had found these next three, uh, just last week for a dollar. So issue 31, this one actually does really well as well. I, I didn't realize how well these, some of these still sell, but I found this issue 31, you know, last week as well as 28, another gorgeous, gorgeous cover, and 29, another good one, and uh, the background that I'm using here, issue 30. This is this one I didn't find. I didn't get the issue 30. I got 28, 29, and 31 that I found for a buck a piece uh, last week, but th this is just another gorgeous one I just kind of wanted to share because it's just an awesome, awesome image. So Perillo, fantastic artist, underrated. You don't see... I think people just gotten so many of his covers lately because he's still doing cover work on like Red Sonia and Vampirilla. Just so many covers available these days. I think just people just, you know, don't pay much attention to it, but still fantastic, fantastic stuff. So if you can find some of these on the cheap, definitely grab them and keep your eye out for them. Now I'm going to move off the indie books for a minute and uh, pivot over to, uh, you yeah, know, yeah, a little bit of Marvel. And if my hat, shirt, and glass didn't give it away, I'm gonna pivot over to the Uncanny X Men because I'm just a, you know, I'm a big X Men fan. Uh, now I know you're probably thinking this is where Jim Lee comes into play because I mentioned his name already, but no, this is not where Jim Lee's coming in. This is going to the Mark Silvestri run on uh, the title, which I don't know if you can, if you caught that in the background, a lot of his covers scattered about there. But I'm going with Uncanny 251, which is just an iconic image that crucified Wolverine on the X down there in the Outback was just a great, great cover. Um, and you can still find it. It's not that expensive. You can still find this because this title has a lot of copies out there. And uh, if you can find a decent copy, I just say grab it because if you don't have this in your collection, you just should because it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous cover. That purple with the green uh, offset, it's just, it really pops. And uh, Silvestri also homaged himself and uh, did this on Witchblade 170, which is, again, no, it's fun. You know, when an artist, you know, calls back to his own work, is uh, it's kind of cool to me. So you can see Witchblade there, but on a W. Uh, so pretty fun. Still sticking with that color scheme, still same image. Uh, definitely another good book to go grab if you can. Even the uh, even the box up here in the corner, the you know, the little, little box there for Top Cow, it harkens back to the, you know, the old uh, Marvel the old Marvel one. So that is kind of a cool little, uh, little tidbit. And this is, again, this entire run that Silvestri did was, uh, was a good run. I mean, you go to this team, uh, this was the Outback team of X-Men. So you, you had, you know, you had your Wolverine, you had Rogue, you had Psylocke before she became a ninja assassin. You had Longshot, Gateway, Dazzler, Colossus, Storm. It, it, this was just a fun team. And this was a great little run with the, you know, with the Reavers and whatnot down there in the Outback. Uh, it's, Definitely Siege Perilous, you know, in the stories and stuff. Definitely something to uh, to read as well. So uh, outside of some of the fun covers and gorgeous covers that Silvestri did back then that you should be uh, grabbing, because uh, these are definitely in the in the cheap boxes, some of these X-Men books. Um, yeah, we get them for the stories too. So it doesn't have to just be for the cover just because the cover's awesome. Sometimes the inside is good too. Yeah, who would have known? We just open it up and check it out. All right, but for my last pick, I, I told you Jim Lee was coming, so here's Jim Lee, and, and I came here with uh, Wolverine 27 is the one that I picked. Now, there's a co couple of great Wolverine covers out there that you can find. This one, it's just one that I always think of. He's jumping right out at you. This image was used a lot on a lot of other media and materials uh, back in that time because he just captured Wolverine perfectly here. So again, it, this is not too expensive of a book. So if you can't find it in the dollar bin, you can still probably find it pretty cheap. But you keep your eye out. This Wolverine run, there's a lot of copies of this as well. So there's a lot of uh, of these Wolverine issues that you can grab for a buck. because And they might be banged up, but I mean, some of these things. This thing is just, again, look at it. It's fantastic. That orange just jumps right off the page at you just like he is. 
And uh, if you didn't remember this image, you can also see that this was kind of a, a tweaked version of this image was used for the Wolverine NES game, you know, back in the day from LJN. Uh, this was a fun game. Uh, I don't know if you guys, I mean, if you're old enough to remember the old NES cartridges, you know, the way we used to have to play games with those. You, you had to blow on them sometimes. You had to, you know, power reset uh, just to keep your game going. Write down your, uh, write down the save codes because the machines didn't have an internal memory. Weird stuff. Weird stuff for uh, any old enough to uh, to remember back that far. But this Wolverine game was kind of fun. I mean, I think this was probably one of the first uh, X Men games that you can get like to play in, at home. So I'm sure a lot of uh, a lot of you guys out there as well had this uh, or had played this game because yeah, it kind of had a Mega Man kind of vibe to it, just side scroller. But that's what games were back then, and they were all great. So that's my picks for this week. Uh, hopefully you enjoy those. Those are just some covers that I think you should be keeping your eye out for. Uh, definitely some gorgeous art. It's, some of these might be tough to find on the cheap. I will admit that, but doesn't mean you can't look for them. And doesn't mean you should not be aware of them if you didn't know about them already. Because I don't want to pretend that I know everything. And I don't want to assume that everybody watching this knows everything as well. So hopefully some of this information was useful to you and helps you in your, you know, your digging while you're out there. So... If you're watching this on my channel, hang on. I got a couple of honorable mentions for you. Otherwise, I will see you guys next week where I think I'm going to be covering some Star Wars books that you can still find on the cheap. So uh, keep a lookout for that next, uh, next Friday. Uh, so with that, I will see you guys later.